was just sitting at work and uh, just thinking about you guys. And, uh, uh, man, starting to get emotional. I um, it, These are all tears of joy. And uh, I, I just want to tell you guys that um, I love you guys. And, um, and you guys have been such a... Um, a great part of my life for the last three years and I was just sitting back and thinking like I don't know where I would be if if it wasn't for you guys and um I just really wanted to tell you guys that I loved you I mean and even when we're not together um you know I still think about you guys and and I want to make sure that everything's good with you. Um, but, you know, Thanksgiving's coming. And I just wanted to <clears throat> just take a minute and just um, want to just, you know, thank you guys and, and just tell you I just appreciate. I appreciate you guys. Um, so I uh, look forward to, to seeing you guys on Thursday and uh I'll see you, Donna, when you get back, and um, we'll definitely be together, all together soon. All right, guys, talk to you soon. Breathe in the water vapor. <laughs> right. <laughs> man, if it thunders, it's gonna be so loud, it's gonna be like boom, boom, boom. Ah, man. <laughs> it's gonna be so loud. Don't talk it up. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh my God. Hey, Nisi, it gets flat over here. <laughs> oh boy. It's a cross beat? Yeah. It's a cross beat, yeah. yeah. Pay no attention to the mountain in front of you. <laughs> look at the ground, Nisi. Pay no attention to the man behind the feet. 12,000. Oh, look at Donna. Oh, uh, here. This is beautiful. We're going to get some sun up here. Guys, we had 12,200 feet. We had to get to uh, what? 12,006? We had two, yeah, we only got 400 feet to go. 400 feet. And if y'all can see, it is nothing but clouds. We are in the clouds. And we dying. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is our last will and testament. This is hard, guys. All jokes aside, oh, this I'm is... enjoying it, I'm loving it. I mean, break it up there, nobody can take it from us. Yep, great accomplishment, but this is hard. This was no joke. Yeah. We are completely out of energy. Uh, We've been climbing for hours. At this point, it's sheer will power. We mm -hmm. cold. We're going to finish, breathe. though. Can't breathe. Head's pounding. Stomach's pounding. Stomach's pounding. But we're about to do it. For me, hiking has always been a metaphor for life. Um, you see this goal, your goal is always to get to the top of any mountain. And you see this mountain sometimes, you know, this mountain might be 12,000 feet high, it might be 5,000, or it could be 2,800 feet high. And you see this thing and you look at it and you're shaking your head like, no, there's no way possible I can get up this thing. And sometimes along the, the trail, you got to take a break. You got to stop. And then when you stop, sometimes you get that self-doubt. You know, can I do it? Can I finish this? Is it too hard? But then that's where that internal toughness has got to kick in. Like, I can do this. Because my goal is to finish this and to get that perfect picture. 
And once, you know, you're halfway through your hike, you're like, okay, maybe this is not so tough. And then when you get up to where you think it's the top, sometimes you get those false peaks. And that's kind of like life. You know, you think everything is running along kind of smooth and perfect, and life throws you a curveball. So, you know, you might see some false peaks here and there, but that's got to just keep driving you and pushing that motivation. And then when you get to the top, you know, all that hard work you've done, you know, the sprained ankles, the stumbles, the falls, it was, it's just all worth it. Kevin from originally from Cleveland, Ohio. My name is Donna Gray. I am from Pennsylvania. Jamal Thomas, Phoenix, Arizona, by way of Kalamazoo. Say, what's up, Donna? Hey, what's up? Donna? You ready? Y'all bundled up. Ready. Hey, you want the Casor, Kevin? <laughs> the Casor. <laughs> I got too much stuff, unless okay. you need me to carry it. No, no, I'm not, I'm not going to carry it. I'm going to leave it. Yeah, we need the knife. Tell everybody we're going to carry it. We need the knife, and we need to cut the gun. Say, Nisi, what's up? Yeah. Yeah. Get pumped. Ready for this. Yep. Yep. Let's Let's do how do you like it, everybody? What's up, Jamal? I'm filming you filming me. What's up? What's up? What's up? Let's do it. I love the way you do it. Well, I mean, we all have uh, different personalities. <laughs> um, I, I think we're a unique group, and I think we complement each other very well. I was on the mountain for 10 minutes, and I came back down because, you know, I didn't like the person I was hiking with. So you got to be with the right people. You have to have the right energy if you want to go hiking. So if somebody says that, I can respect that because you have to be with the right person, you know, or the right group of people to enjoy yourself. We support each other, you know, we're there for one another. Um, we encourage one another. Um, we got your back. We're in this together. Just starting with Jamal. I mean, Jamal is, is my hiking brother. Uh, he's like the brother I never had. He's, he's down to hike seven days a week, twice a day, three times a day if he wants to. And he's kind of the motivator of the group. Jamal would hike in 125 degrees if he could. He'd hike in minus 20 below. So he's kind of like the rock of the group. And he's the one that's always pushing us. Hey guys, let's do something harder. You have Jamal who is the 
silly, the silly one, you know, Jamal, when we're out hiking, you know, he's always getting into something. You know, he's a very young in spirit, um, but, a, but a guy who would do anything for you, you know, like my, like my little brother. But Jamal has always been the hike leader. He's like, all right, guys, let's go. And he's always just setting a pace for us, going, 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 going. Jamal, I met Jamal, South Mountain. Um, he was there a lot, and uh, you know, he was just, he's, he's the guys, like I said, it was like family. He helped the women, you know, you, you need up, you need down, let me, you know, watch your step, and you know, let me walk back with you so you won't get lost or whatever. Donna is, I think she's the most adventurous one. Donna's the one that I'm always afraid, like, oh, Donna, don't get too close to the edge. <laughs> Cause she's always got to get that perfect picture or she's got to climb up a wall or, or, or do something just different. And I'm like, Donna, come on, come on. But uh, Donna is uh, just very determined. She's a very tough woman. When I first met Donna, I met Donna on Camelback, which was my first hike. Every hike after that, she was there. And we, uh, you know, it, our friendship grew. We had a few things in common. She uh, was in Phoenix, no family. I was in Phoenix, no family. Eventually got to know each other more. Um, and then again, some, we would do these adventurous hikes and she was always part of that. And I was part of that. And we just got closer and we got closer, you know. So that bond started. Donna. She's, I like her spirit she brings to the group because she's always, keeps a positive attitude. And um, she looks at the, the glass is always half full with her no matter what. Uh, Nisi, Nisi is just a beautiful person. Uh, Nisi is the one that uh, feels just like my sister. Like we always like, hey Nisi, come on, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Uh, we always inspire each other. On some of our hard hikes, Nisi never thought she could get to uh, finish some of these tough hikes, but I'm like, you can do it, Nisi. I believe in you. She's always encouraging me, and I'm always encouraging her. When I think of Nisi, Nisi is, she's the life of the group. I mean, she's always laughing. Her laugh is contagious. She has those bright eyes that just invite you in. She just has such a beautiful spirit, and she's really um, caring and you know, loves her family, you know, uh, her, her daughter and her, her grandbabies, um, just really loves her, her family. And um, we just have a lot of fun. And so Nisi and I do a lot of things together. She's kind of like the, uh, the, the safety of the group. She also always worried about this or that. She's always questioning stuff to make sure everything's okay. Of course, Kevin, who's like, I think like the grandfather of the group, you know, he just, he always makes sure everybody's okay. Um, you know, even hiking, you know, everybody that comes hiking, he makes sure nobody's left behind. Um, just, a, just a great guy who always motivates everybody and, you know, no matter what, just keeps us all, um, you know, through his eyes and his vision, you know, he kind of helps us, brings us all along. Well, he's the, I would say he's like the, the Michael Bibbins of the group. <laughs> he keeps, <laughs> he makes sure everything is in control and everything is going wild. And, you know, if I have an idea that's kind of over the edge or risque, he'll, he'll be like, he'll pull me to the side and be like, hey, we can't do that. So, and, you know, so collectively together, I, 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 I don't know what I would have done, you know, if I didn't connect with these folks when I came out to Arizona. It's, it's made, um, you know, time here in Arizona so much better um, than I think it would have been if I didn't have uh, didn't have them. All right, we finally made it to the uh, sign-in spot. How y'all feeling back there? How y'all feeling? How y'all feeling? Easy. We got this. All right. No air, don't care. No, no air. <laughs> yes. All right, little sign in spot. Register.
how I ended up with Camel Life is I was one of the slowest hikers and I had I was always the slowest hiker and I was at the back of the line for hiking and I used to speak to um, one of the original members Jessica who we had always just kind of talked and we got pretty close and we kept doing the same trails over and over with the group that we were in so Jessica had a great idea she said hey there's a whole bunch of other trails uh, around Phoenix and she said hey do you want to try these they're a little bit tougher and I'm like, well, sure. I'm like, I'm slow hiker. She was a slow hiker. So it was kind of a, a good match. So we started venturing out on different trails. Jessica was uh, pretty good friends with Donna and Nisi. And we kind of had met Jamal just kind of along the way. And Jessica was the person who introduced me to Ron. First really big trip or big hike that we did together was up in Payson, uh, Arizona. It was called Barnhart. And it was a 10 mile hike. Ron had picked it out. It was a great choice for a hike. We hiked about five miles and we got to a waterfall, which was just pretty spectacular. Uh, fast forward about maybe a year after that, uh, in our local magazine, uh, I think it's a, a Phoenix, Arizona magazine, they had featured our hiking group in a, in a January edition, which was pretty cool. We never had thought about becoming an official hiking group. But the more and more we had uh, hiked together, people had started seeing us on the trails. And they were like, hey, what do you guys call? And we were like, we're called nothing. <laughs> we're, just, we're, just, <laughs> we're just friends who hike together. And people were like, you guys really should come up with a name. And we were like, okay, we'll come up with some kind of hiking name. So I, I'd say probably maybe 15, 20 hikes in, because uh, we were pretty active on Facebook. Uh, Donna loves taking pictures. She's the big picture person, her and Nisi. So we were posting a lot of pictures of us on uh, like an Arizona hiking uh, Facebook page, getting a lot of great uh, responses. We, we were just coming up with all oh, just kind of crazy names like Family Who Hikes, Hiking Family, uh, Arizona Hiking Family Friends. And we had come up with uh, Camouflage Lifestyle. And it was because on one of the first hikes that we had did together as a group, we were wearing camouflage. And we were like, hey, let's do something real cool. We'll get matching outfits and we'll take some really spectacular pictures. I mean, all this stuff with the whole camel life just pretty much came by accident. We were just, we were just friends, literally friends who just hiked. So we had, um, we said, okay, so let's be camouflaged lifestyle. And through the course of doing that, I said, hey, if we ever get a Facebook page, can anybody spell camouflage? Because I was always messing it up. I'm like, C-A-M-O-flage. So I said, you know, we got to shorten this down because if anybody runs into us, if, if they don't type in the right words or spell camouflage correctly, they'll never get to us. So camouflage lifestyle became camel life. And I think the name camo and life were taken for a, a website. So we're different because we're the only group that we found in a country that hikes three times a week, 20, uh, three times a week, all year round because uh, we're fortunate we have all these mountains here in Arizona so we can do that even in the summertime uh, we can hike all year round we just have to alter our schedules by either going super super early or we have to go after the sun comes down so we said hey we you know we're different you know we're primarily uh, an african-american hiking group but we're open to everybody so uh, because we're different let's instead of having a C for camel let's do it as a K and for the life, well, we made the, the camel different. Let's make the life different. So camel life became camel life. We have all these uh, different personalities. I have my own personality and Donna, Nisi, Jamal. 
Ron, Jessica, we all had our different personalities. So we said, let's not be just a camo life. Let's be camo life with a K. I got into hiking because I was going through a divorce at the time and I was overweight, about 42 pounds overweight and was looking for something to do on the weekends because I was just sitting at home, bored, watching Netflix. So I was looking for like a co-ed volleyball or, or softball or something like that. And I was uh, just kind of joining a, a couple groups on Facebook and I saw this group of hikers and they were laughing having a good time and I said huh, maybe this would be a good idea to uh, meet people and to get a little bit of exercise my job brought me out to Arizona and so when I got out here um, I just had a lot of time and so I tried to figure out well what could I do to, to fill my time so I started searching for you know so for something um, you know I would go to the gym and work out but it just it just wasn't the same you know, especially when you didn't have like a buddy or somebody to kind of motivate you. So I was looking on Facebook one night and I saw a, a post about um, about hiking. And so I reached out to um, that individual and met up with their crew and went hiking. And from the first time I came out to a hiking um, event and and saw the mountains and hit the mountains. It, I was sold. I, I mean, I knew that this was something that I was meant to do, and uh, I've been doing it ever since. Uh, I didn't want to join a gym and be that fat dude at the gym trying to lift weights and help, help. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> Get these weights off my chest. Uh, so I uh, had uh, sent a message to the guy uh, who had uh, started the uh, hiking group. I was on Facebook and I seen a group hiker and I was like, at first I thought it was a TV commercial and I looked at it again and I was like, oh these people must be out of town somewhere, where they at? I looked at it, I was like, okay this is right here. So I hooked up with the group and that's when I did my first hike. And, uh, Cause I needed something to do and it was cool. Uh, I had just got divorced so I had a lot of free time quote unquote, and I need to get into something else. So, I went on that first hike, it was about six o'clock in the morning, I have a canyon, and it was raining. Uh, I didn't have any boots, <laughs> I had one bottle of water. <laughs> I had on some Air Force Ones. I mean, I was very unprepared. Uh, and when I first got out there, everybody was friendly, the energy was great. And uh, I was with that group we did that mountain consecutively for months and uh, I wanted to veer off and do other trails so that's how I started hiking. So after that first experience I said this is kind of cool I think I could get into this. Um, so then that was on a Saturday and then on a Sunday I did an uh, even harder hike than that. Uh, that one was almost four miles and I stopped man countless times 15 20 times uh, I did have plenty of water, but uh, didn't have any hiking boots, didn't have any hiking shorts, none of that stuff. 
Uh, but it was a pretty good experience. I was pretty sore after those two weekend hikes. But after that, um, I started falling in love with hiking. Wasn't anything I was interested in. Never thought about it. Never knew anything about it. Um, but when I moved to Phoenix, I was looking for some type of activity. But what I ran across was um, a group of people, different, diverse, uh, music, interaction, you know, on this trail, just having a good time. Everybody laughing and talking, and I'm like, what is going on? I want to do that. And uh, I wanted to find a way to meet people. Um, so uh, I finally went to one of the hikes, um, which that was my first first time ever experiencing hiking. Uh, uh, but first time, and I haven't stopped since then. up guys we about I think we close to about 11,000 hopefully how you feeling Donna it's beautiful beautiful it's tough I can tell way up we well, all the way up what about you Ryan how you feeling feel good I'm tired and feeling good at the same time about 10,417 feet yeah we, we up there look at those oh, clouds over clouds. There. Check out the clouds. Look at the clouds. The clouds are rolling in. Oh, man. The clouds. So we still got to go to 12,600. So let's get back at it. Well, I was uh, married at the time, and it was hard for my um, my ex to find a job in Cleveland. I've worked for the same company for about 28 years, and that company is what brought me out to Arizona. And we had talked about for a number of years moving uh, because the snow, we were done with the snow. Uh, you know, like four or five months out the year, you're stuck in your house, can't go anywhere. Uh, but the lady who had done our wedding invitation, she said, you guys are young, you might want to take a look at Phoenix. Been in Phoenix 10 years. Uh, I love it out here. I came here to visit, visit initially back in 2008. I was here for four hours and uh, I called my at the time girlfriend and I asked her if she wanted to move here and she said no. So I said, well, we can just be friends. It's a growing city. 
Um, outside of the summers, which can be extremely hot, uh, she said the rest of the year is perfect. Uh, cost of living is pretty good out here. And if you guys are into outdoor things, um, there's a lot of hiking and biking and that kind of stuff. Born and raised in the city. I'm a city girl. Uh, lived there most of my life. Uh, my career got me out of St. Louis pretty much. Um, I'm in insurance, so I moved to Las Vegas. Um, from Las Vegas to Phoenix and I have one daughter, three grandkids and uh, just having fun, enjoying life. What's up, Nisi? We're... Hey, what's up? We are beat. P. Oh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we at 11,300. 360. 11,360 feet. But Wow. And the air is very thin. The air is thin. Head's starting to hurt. But we doing it. We ain't quitting, though. Won't stop. Can't stop. <laughs> We can't, can't even laugh, it hurt. No, right. Right. Just... Come on, Nisi, give me a smile. I know. Give me a smile. Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> we're in the clouds, y'all. Like, we're in the clouds. Like, we're in the clouds, like, seriously. <laughs> Just. In the clouds. Wave to the camera. You can't move, huh? Y'all can't move. <laughs> All right, we still getting it in, though. We, we almost there. We've been yeah. doing this for a couple hours, but we're going to get it. Yep. We're going to get it. We ain't stopping. We, when we had when we had decided to make camel life a group and just we had to have we had to have some ground rules for the group there's four of us now there used to be six think about hiking usually when you hike a lot especially women they're gonna be attractive but one thing I do is I don't date any of the women who I hike with because for one it's not gonna work nope um, uh, not gonna happen. Um, with me, I, you know, I, I was looking for friendship, you know, like family, have fun together, do, do things together. And once my mind is focused on that, that, I mean, honestly, that's just what it is. You know, I love those guys like brothers. I love Donna like a sister. Um, that's it. That's all. We play, you know, we play like we marry, we play like you my boyfriend, you my girlfriend. People think we dated. It's so funny uh, because none of that, you know, we, we, we don't even have to talk about it. We just know. And our number one rule in the group was we were never going to date each other because we knew if, if uh, something happened in a group or uh, we, we didn't want uh, a relationship to mess up the group because we had such great chemistry. I mean, we laugh, we have a good time, and we're around these people a lot. So our big thing was we were never, ever, ever going to date anybody in the core group. That would complicate things if you know people develop relationships. And we knew that we wanted to be able to bring people in. You know, and if we looked as though we were a bunch of couples, nobody's going to want to, you know, hike with us. So that was something we talked about early on. And we're just so close. I mean, they're, they're truly like, and I'm the oldest of the group. Um, they're truly like, you know, my brothers and my sister. And so, you know, we just kind of thought that that would make things just a, a little weird. Two, because I say this, when you hike, you try to get away. Now, if you're dating this person, you're, gonna, you're not gonna have anywhere to go. So, <laughs> so, what you want to do is you want to have an outlet. And plus, I mean, if you want to date somebody, you know, date a bike rider, date a bobsledder. I mean, there's other people to hike 
Don't date the people who you hike with, you know? No, that, that's just, it, it's not gonna happen. But unfortunately, somebody in the group, they had to, you know, um, date. Well, I shouldn't say they had to date, but there, there was a couple in the group that did date. And um, I mean, it did exactly what, in my eyes, I knew what was gonna happen. And then we all, kind of saw it coming. The original six, we were never going to date each other. Um, Jessica and Ron started dating, which we were cool with it. We were, I mean, they looked like such a great couple. Um, you know, we were happy for them and, you know, it didn't impact. It, it, we tried not to let it change who we were, um, but just as we kind of thought, it did change who we were. And, but we talked about it and, and yeah, it was, uh, Jessica and Ron. Such a great couple. They had a lot of good uh, good times together. They went off to Universal Studios one time without us. <laughs> we got a call from them on Saturday like, hey guys, guess where we are? Universal Studios. We're not hiking today. So we thought that was really cool, but um, unfortunately their relationship didn't work out. Before, what I know is before they start dating, we had the group. It, we were all in a group together, and then they start dating. Well, um, one a separate way. The good thing is, we still have maintained a friendship with them. I, you know, I, you know, see them and have actually um, spent time with them, you know, either hiking or um, or just out and about. But. It, it will never be, you know, it would never be the same, at least not the original six. Ron had stopped hiking with the group, um, and Jessica had taken a break from the group and just pretty much stopped hiking. So me, Jamal, Donna, and Nisi, we were just like, wow, so what's next for us? So we kind of sat down, we went out to our favorite place, our favorite restaurant, we had some barbecue. And we said, okay guys, well let's continue with Camel Life because I love to hike. Jamal loves to hike, Donna loves to hike, Nisi loves to hike. So let's continue doing what we love. Fun, 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 so fun. I mean, we like family. Um, you know, and, and, and those guys were hitting on each other and playing and next thing I knew they dating. Like, wait a minute, we, we talked about you know, we first started, we talked about how, you know, we, we don't, you know, we shouldn't date one another, you know, um, and everybody was in agreement, and you know, we, we all agreed because we had no intentions on dating anybody in the first place in the group, so, um, but fortunately that didn't happen. Jessica and Ron, they start dating, and um, one thing led to another. It, it, it was going good for a while, but you know they ended up not staying together, and it affected the group. Um, whether they know it or not, because they weren't part of the group anymore. So again, you know, it's six of us, and now it's four. You know that it. it just the commitment that we we all agreed and you know during the beginning so um, but other than that I still love them I, I love Ron like a brother um, Jessica you know she's cool um, but you know it just something should just be off limits and <laughs> you know I just I just wish we still all had that bond that we started with because Again, it, it, it was something that I've never had, me personally, I've never experienced anything like that.
hiking is just that above walking. You are just walking and they say that's the safest exercise without damaging your knees, your body, your back. Hiking will take you where you want to go and it'll get you there. And I've gotten fascinated. I never knew I liked sunsets. I never knew I liked the outdoors. But uh, I take a sunset every time I see it, you know, the clouds, the mountains. It is beautiful. So, you know, when I see mountains, I just want to hike. I love it. I mean, it's like, it's, it's almost weird. It's like, if you got a favorite candy or ice cream, when you see it, you got to have it. I see a mountain, I got to have it. I'm like, I got to do that mountain. Because I think every day you need to free your mind. And this is like, almost like meditation. It's like you clear everything out of your schedule, out of your head for that hour or two to hike. All your worries stay at home. It gives you a chance to think about life and regroup, you know. That's what I like about a lot of it. Just camel life is more or less like something came together like uh, a family. More or less it was uh, our escape from our daily life. Um, kind of like a getaway. So it was involved with six people that uh, had the love for the same passion. When it comes to the three girls, great bunch of women. Challenging, they're driven, they're focused. They're beautiful women who go out and hike and strive right along with the guys. The guys are very strong guys. Tried to take care of the women, but we didn't need to because <laughs> they were so strong. But uh, we we're all competitive, so just all of us. I think we was a very good group to come together. Um, you could say for a little while we had walls up because we didn't think anybody could do what we did the way we did it. You know, it was a great group, great, great bunch of guys. You know, loved the time hiking, I really did. I think I felt more like brothers and sisters with them. Um, I guess towards the end of me being in Camel Life, kind of crossed lines with one of them in the group. Me and her kind of would have probably against, you know, when we first started. We kind of said we weren't going to date anybody in the group. But it kind of happened, you know. Um, I have no regrets about it. It was a very good relationship. I mean, things were great. Um, I think that kind of might have soured up the group a little bit for us, you know, coming together. But it happened. You know, sometimes you don't have control of uh, what happens. But uh, they were good about it, even though it happened that way. They still didn't, you know, really show any hatred towards us. I think just, uh, not quite the mood, but everything kind of changed for different reasons, I believe. I did end up leaving Kevin in life. I'm a true believer if I'm with someone, I kind of follow what they do. And I think we kind of both made a decision to leave Kevin life. I think she made it first and I followed her. I had no regrets of being with Kemal Life. I still don't dislike Kemal Life. I still follow Kemal Life. I still feel like I am Kemal Life all my life. <laughs> you know, hey, you know, whether I'm there or not, I'm still following. I do, I do still do some uh, come out of retirement moments and <laughs> go out there and show up, just pop up at them, you know, so. That's my family, man. I, I, I look at it this way, you know, you got family and you may not like everything they do, have some bad disagreements or dis disputes, but you still love them and care about them. You can't throw them away for those little disagreements. I still feel like they're a part of me. I wouldn't say join. I kind of feel like I'm always going to be a part of it. Um, it's like your family. You can't just quit your family. You come right back to them. They're going to love you. They show you some love, you know. So I kind of feel like, you know, I, I am still a part of it. They ever call me back out for something, and I can be there, I'll be there. So yeah, um, it's kind of one of those things that's, you leave your mama house, but you can always come back. So that's kind of what I look at it, you know, so I can leave home and come back, you know. So yeah, I'm still there, just in the background.
since I'm from Arizona, I've been hiking uh, probably 20, 30 years. Um, I remember having my kids hike from five or six years old, and I never, ever, ever seen any minorities out there hiking. I think black people don't hike because there's a stigma behind hiking. Hiking is uh, a lot of people, a lot of black people think hiking is a white thing. Why don't I think blacks get into hiking? Um, I, I think, first of all, it's it's a, because I think it is a sport, you know, I, I you know, I, I, you need, absolutely need athletic ability to, to be able to do what it is that we do. Uh, why black people don't hike? Because they think it's snakes up here. They think it's too hot. They think it's too early. And uh, it's actually a lot of fun. And I go out to North Mountain Squall Peak by myself. I've never seen any probably for the last, this is recent, probably the last 10 years. So I've never seen a minority group out there hiking, period. Um, this is all brand new. When I, when, I, when I first started hiking and I was telling people that I went on a hike, they're like, Man, you're about to get ate. <laughs> you're gonna get ate by a coyote. You're gonna fall off the mountain. You don't know what you're doing out there. You're gonna run out of water. You say snakes and coyotes. And if you go some places, you say bobcats. <laughs> I went hiking a couple months ago and ran into some bear hoppings. <laughs> and when you see that, real reality check. But I think there's a misconception about hiking. I think, you know, when you watch movies or, you know, you watch shows and that are propelling themselves with rope and, and things like that and it's not really what hiking is and I mean it can be and who knows maybe someday I'll propel myself to, to that level of hiking. But the longer and the more hikes that I, I did people started saying okay maybe Kevin's really taking this seriously because uh, I was out there hiking and it was such a spiritual thing for me because hiking came along for me back when I was going through a divorce and I wanted to reinvent myself because I had been in a relationship for 12 years, been married for 10, and you get kind of comfortable. And you know, you do the same things, you have the same routines. And when I said, okay, I'm gonna reinvent myself and I started hiking, people were laughing at me in the beginning. They were like, oh, you're gonna get airlifted off of that mountain. You can't do it. And then I said, I used those negative things to fuel me. And I just really said, okay, they're laughing at me now, but in six months from now, they're gonna be hiking with me. So it, it's so funny because the people at work who used to laugh at me, when I started losing weight, I had lost about 26 or 28 pounds uh, after six months. And people were like, man, that hiking must be working out for you, Kev. So I'm like, yeah, it works pretty good. I said, why don't you come out with me? And people are scared. Like, I know a lot of black people who have never hiked before are just scared. They think that we're scaling mountains on our hands and feet. And I said, no, there's actual trails. You take the trail up, you get to the summit, you take a lot of great pictures. Uh, you're with people for hours, so you get to know people really well. Uh, you have a lot of fun, you make a lot of friends, and it's a big social thing, uh, especially in a, a city this big for Phoenix, because Phoenix, uh, we're with over a million people here. We're so spread out. It's really hard to meet other African Americans here in Phoenix. And I've met a lot of people over the last year and a half just by hiking. I, I think because of here, at least in Arizona, there's a lot of folks that are from Arizona that when you talk to them about hiking, they have never really hiked. You know, you have you know, all this beauty. I remember my first time flying into Arizona and then just seeing all of these mountains and just being intrigued about about that. And so, um, I, so I think that there may be a fear, you know, you know, of of that. Um, and so, what I guess I'm, you know, encouraged about is through us introducing and you know putting our videos on. Facebook and Instagram and kind of showing folks that, okay, this is something that you can do and just how much fun we have with it. Um, and the fact that some folks who maybe didn't necessarily think about hiking um, are now hiking. You know, I see friends on Facebook, friends I've went to you know, high school with or college with, and they post a picture of a hike that they've taken. They've gone on vacation and they're 
looking for a place to hike. And so, you know, and I'm not saying that that it was all about, you know, them seeing me, but I've had a lot of them say, you know, a lot of friends say, you know, I've been watching you hike and, and I just was inspired and I just wanted to try it. Uh, running to people on the trails, people I've become Facebook friends with that I've never met before. I'll see them on the trails. They'll be like, hey, Kevin, how are you? And I'm like, hey, it's good. We finally get to meet in person. It's And it's pretty wonderful. But it, it's a stigma. It's a stigma with hiking because I was here for eight years. I, I drive past these mountains every single day and I never once thought, I'm going to hike that. Because I'm like, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get why people hike. But when I I started hiking and it gave me a great outlet for uh, just all the stress that I was going through because I had, lo I had lost my mom unexpectedly at the time. Uh, a couple years, uh, three years ago, I had unexpectedly lost my mom. So I was dealing with uh, grieving for my mom suddenly passing. Uh, then I was going through a divorce uh, and just wasn't happy with myself. So. When I got out hiking and you go out, you're out for four, five, six miles, a couple hours, and you just really lose yourself in the beauty of the mountains. And you don't think about all the bad things that's going on. You know, the three flat tires you might've got the other day, or you're not making enough money, or you're just, or whatever it is, or whatever is going on in your life. You get out here, you got your backpack on, you got your water, you got your snacks, you got your friends that you've made hiking, you're walking, you're talking, you forget about all those problems. But I think uh, us as a group, we have inspired a lot of black people to go hiking and just kind of the projects that we do, um, you know, we, we really want to encourage people just to get out here to experience what we have. Because. When I first got here, moved here 10 years ago, I had no idea I'd be up in these mountains. I mean, when people went hiking, I thought, I didn't know there were trails up here. I thought they was just up here road. So, I mean, if you don't know about it, you know, it can be intimidating, but once you get to know it, it it's all right. So that's why I don't think a lot of black people hike. When I was going through my divorce, I when I moved out, I, I had rented a room and a house for about six months till I could save up to uh, get my own place. And literally, when I left, I had an air mattress, a leaky air mattress, that I filled up with air every night. When I woke up in the morning, I'd end up on the floor because it had a slow leak into a uh, slow leak in the uh, mattress. I had a laptop and I had some clothes, and that was it. Uh, when I got to my own place, I was literally sleeping on the floor for a couple weeks, but one of the promises that I had made to myself is when I rebuilt everything was to pay cash with everything. So slowly I had to just start rebuying stuff. I had to buy a bed, had to buy a mattress, I had to buy a couch, had to buy a TV, I had to rebuy everything. But just like I live my life now, I do it on my own terms, by my own rules. So I kind of just blocked out everything about when people told me how I should be living and I wanted to live like I wanted to live. For the first time in my life, I could truly write my own destiny. Well, when I, when I first moved here and um, that whole transition of leaving what I always say was my comfort zone. Um, it really was hard when I, um, when I first moved away. Um, you know, leaving my family and, you know, leaving everybody that I love basically on my own. And, um, the first time I went out hiking and just being on the mountain and climbing and, you know, using my energy and 
just the beauty and the, the spiritual journey, it, it just, it, it really just changed my life. And it gave me like a strength that I didn't even know I had. Um, and so I realized that I had to keep doing it. You know, I just, I had to keep hiking because if I wasn't hiking, it felt like something was missing. And so it, it filled such a important part of my life and um, the relationships that I've developed and going to different mountains and experiencing different things. It's it just been amazing. I left Kalamazoo because I didn't want to, there were a lot of stuff going on and I didn't feel there were any opportunities there for me. I mean, I love Kalamazoo, but I mean, I'm a better person since I've been here. One thing I do miss, the only thing I regret about leaving there is my son, Jamal Jr. Because when I moved away from there, he was 13 at the time and that was hard. But I'm happy that I left and me and him still have a good relationship. My most memorable hike. Jamal, I think was the one who said, hey, let's go ahead and do Humphreys. A hardest hike? Oh, wow. By far, the hardest hike was Mount Humphreys. Which we had no experience doing super tall hikes. Wow. Um, Humphreys was, um, it was a beast. Uh, Mount Humphreys was uh, 12,600 feet, had never been that high before. <laughs> That's my most memorable height. 12,866, I believe, somewhere around that. It was a height that had a little bit of everything. It was definitely challenging. You had a lot of greenery, then you had, uh, which was more like a heavy forest. Um, so you had that, then you had just the altitude and the climb, I mean, it was, it was amazing. I mean, we were literally above the clouds. Memorable because uh, it was the most challenging. I was fearful, but the support, you know, Kevin, Jamal, Donna, Ron, Jessica. I mean, we seemed like we all had the same fear. So I, I, I wasn't alone. Because of the altitude and us not necessarily being used to that altitude, um, we all experienced effects of, of that. Um, the headaches, uh, just dizziness, like all those things. I mean, it was, it was pretty risky. Six of us started out, but um, you know, four of us made it pretty close, but uh, Jamal and I actually made it up to the peak. I didn't complete Humphrey. Um, we made it to the saddle. Actually, a little bit past the saddle, but anyway. Um, I think because of the altitude of Humphreys, I think everybody was just a little scared. Um, just not knowing whether or not our bodies would adjust. Uh, read a lot of, you know, watch YouTube videos and read a lot of things just about altitude sickness and trying to make sure we were as prepared as we possibly could be. Um, but you really still ne never know how you're, you're going to respond. Fine. Trail, going to the summit was was cool. I mean, you got the, you're like in the clouds. It's like, you know, you're going higher and higher up, the elevation. You know, you, you're getting this little, I'm getting woozy, getting kind of sick, you know, to my stomach, a little nauseous, you know, slipping a, a couple of times. 
and again, I still didn't know, you know, you know, learning that that's the elevation and that's what makes you feel the way that I was feeling. We, a lot of us was feeling that. Um, and then talking to each other, yeah, I'm feeling sick too. Yeah, you get nauseous. Yeah, I'm getting nauseous. You know, but we got to keep going. Like, okay, let's do this. We, you know, we keep going. We get to the saddle. Um, and I'm getting sicker and sicker. Um, I mean, to the point where I, I'm leaning over. Like, I can barely walk. Um, I found this big stick that I had with me from the beginning of the trail to the end of the trail. Not kidding you. Um, and uh, I, it was so emotional because I was so sick that I couldn't go any further. You're kind of like looking up and you see, you know, because Mount Humphrey's portion of that is, is like a ski slope. So it's, you know, it's way, way up there. Um, but as we kind of started out, I mean, we all know if we're starting out on a hike, the goal was to always finish. And really the goal was for all of us to finish together I, I, I my body wouldn't let me um, and again like we're family Kevin supported me through this entire trail uh, most importantly towards the end where we passed the saddle and you know Nisi don't worry you know I, I just I was so upset and you know emotional because I wanted to complete this trail and not just that but I want I wanted all of us to complete it together um, we don't like to leave anybody you know behind um, but unfortunately that mountain kind of got the best of all of us um, interesting uh, Kevin made sure I was okay so he stopped he waited with me um, of course I needed help I mean there was no way I could be by myself I mean literally I'm I'm leaning over like I can barely walk um, Kevin stayed he supported me here we got Don and Jamal you know the uh, you know, two strongest people that I've ever met you know and they like okay you know no and you see you okay you know we're gonna stay no no you guys go like you you're not gonna come all the way here for nothing go you better go Donna's looking back at me I'm like looking pitiful like don't leave me <laughs> Donna's like I got to go no but she's like you know I'm like go please go and so my family they did it they they made it to the top you know Kevin stay with me you know I'm I'm, I'm not that alert at all at that point. We waited for them. They came back. Oh my gosh, it was so emotional because um, it's, it's almost like I'm doing this for us. And I think that's why we all got emotional. Me and Donna, you know, it's my girl. We hugged, we, we cried because she wanted me to be with her so bad. I wanted to be with them so bad, but it was like, she knew how I was suffering. And she's like, I, we, we did this for us. You know, it was like, we did it for us, Nisi. Not, I did this on my own or, you know, it was for us. And I, I know she, they did, Jamal and, and Donna. And um, it, it was, I would never ever forget that so that's definitely one hike that we want to do again so that we all can make it to the peak yeah, but that that was an experience that I would never ever forget um, it, it was amazing and, 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 and I'm so glad that I did it with with my camera life family
So one of the, the great things about hiking, it helped me get a great bond with my eight-year-old. I remember uh, in the beginning, I wasn't taking my, my youngest son with me hiking, but I would tell him all these great stories about we were hiking at, we were hiking some trail, we get up to the top, and it was a tough hike, but we had a lot of fun. And my eight-year-old said, well, Daddy, I want to go hiking with you, too. That sounds fun. And I said, are you sure you want to go? I said, you know, it's pretty tough, and we'll be out there for a couple hours. And Mason taught me a, a very, very uh, good lesson. He said, Daddy, just because I'm small, people think I can't do things. And I just remember, like, you know what? This kid is, is right on. So I started him out on some easier hikes in the beginning just to kind of see if he would take it seriously. And then he just loved it. And he's like, Daddy, I want my own hiking boots. Daddy, I want my own camel pack. Daddy, I want my own little hiking stick. Daddy, I want my camel life shirt. So I started buying Mason all these things and getting them for him. So I said, let me test this kid. Let me see how tough he is. So I took him on a really, really, really difficult hike and he nailed it. And I'm like, wow, you know, it's not about uh, a person's size. It's always about their heart. And if you have the heart and passion for something, then who, who am I to tell somebody no that they can't do it? So my son Mason just taught me a great lesson. He's like, Daddy, I can do it. And if you can do it, you have a passion, you have that desire, then you can hike just about anything. And, you know, I had a friend who he used to always say that, well, she always used to say that I was going to be some kind of minister or some kind of, you know, somebody that was going to impact a lot of people. And it feels like maybe what her vision was, was through hiking. Um, and just the, the people that we touch, you know, in, in regards to that. And I, I remember um, one time when I was hiking, and I think I was on South Mountain, I think it was actually Pima. And, you know, one thing that I always used to do, I always used to sing and everything when I was younger. And I, you know, I grew up in the church and, you know, I had a, a mother who always prayed for me, especially when she knew I was hiking. Um, but I, but I stood at the top of the mountain one time and, and I started singing and, um, and I, I, it wasn't something that I planned, but in that moment, everything stopped. And um, from, from that day on, I, I can't see myself not ever hiking. Like, I don't know that I'll stay in Arizona forever, but I know that Arizona will always stay in me and that I will always somehow, some way, make my way back to a mountain because it's, it's, it's a part of me, you know, and through, through hiking, I've discovered so, so much, um, you know, not only the beauty of, you know, all of God's creations, you know, from a, just a nature standpoint, it's just amazing, but, but also my strength. You know, not only the physical strength to be able to hike, but just the mental strength to be able to overcome all the obstacles that I had to overcome um, coming to Arizona. So I always think about that moment when I I stood up on that mountain and and I, in, in my only way, just kind of ministered to those folks that were with me at that at, at that time. You can go out there and just do whatever you want to do. That's what I like about it. I mean, there's no time limit, there's no restraints, there's nothing telling what you what to do. It's kind of like when you were a kid, you could just go outside and you didn't have to worry about coming home to the streetlights came on. The only time you came home is when you wanted something to eat. And that's what your backpack is for, your food and your water. And kind of like the trails, you know, when it gets dark, that's when it's time to go home, except for two. So, kind of lets you be a, a free spirit to me, like when you were young, with no worries. I mean, you don't have anything to worry about, say if you're with a group of people who care about you, everybody's sincere, and that's one place where you can go when everybody's on the same page. You know, everybody's out there, whether they're to get away or free their mind, everybody's out there for similar reasons. 
And plus, when you're hiking, it takes an effort to hike. It's not something you do on accident. I mean, you have to get up and get dressed and drive 15, 20 an hour to a hike. So you have a vested interest in it. It's just not like something that just happens. So that's why I think people like hiking. The bus is free. You know, I've been on vacations, spent a lot of money, but I've enjoying hiking. I'd rather go hiking than I would go on a vacation. To be honest with you. I mean, because it's so it's so genuine and organic. You out here with nature, you also get a nice breath of fresh air. I mean, it's wonderful. Camel Life, to me, is um, it, it's uh, a friendship, it's a family, it's different people from with many different backgrounds um, that come together, uh, different life experience, um, support each other. It, I don't know the feeling that I have for camel life. I don't know if I can get that anywhere else. It's almost like it's, it's more than just a special club or a group or a hiking uh, group. It's deeper than that because, and the reason why is because the way we treat each other, we treat each other like family. Um, my traveling, I'm, I'm in Vegas now, but I travel to Phoenix often and I do it because of Camel Life because we're family first. Um, Camel Life just adds to it because it, it's that perfect uh, name for us, you know. Um, it's a bond. Um, not only that, we get so many, we get a lot of support from people um, when we're on a trail. People recognize us and it's all good experience. It's all um, you encourage me, you inspire me, and, and that's what we want to show the world, you know, that we're just not somebody out trying to collect money or uh, lead you to this way or uh, we're selling a product. It's deeper than that. It's, um, you know, it, it uh, like I said, I've, I've never experienced it. It's amazing. It's um, I love my Camel Life family, and uh, I can't see myself without them. Thank you.